Hello everybody, my name is Zach Hartley and welcome to another video about PrintQ. This is my software to help you maximize your 3D printing farm and in this video I'm going to walk you through how ejection works. By this point I assume you you know how to download it, you've got it running on your system and you've hopefully watched my walkthrough video and you know how it works. So now I want to walk you through how to set up ejection on your system. First thing that we need to do is get your printer set up for ejection. Now, depending on your printer, this is gonna change a little bit. If you're running a Prusa Mark IV or Mark IV-S printer, I have a tilt kit and an LCD mount. The tilt kit is gonna allow you to put your printer on an angle and the LCD kit is going to allow you to move the LCD to the top above the metal frame so that you can put it on an angle without jamming and leaning on that LCD. That's the idea there. You can download both of these STLs You'll need to print them, you'll need to install them. They are fairly simple though, uh, not a whole lot to it. So that is what you'll need to do for the Prusa. For the Bamboo, it's a little bit easier. All you need to do is click on and download the tilt kit there. It's a set of legs that will put your Bamboo up on about a 20 degree angle and get you all set up. You can find all of this on the downloads page at the PrintQ website, www.printq.ca, uh, where you can also find the software and basically all the resources that you need. At the bottom of the page though, you will find a page that says sample ejection G-codes. It's basically where I am going to be storing all of the G-codes that I am creating and testing over time. So if you wanna use any of my G-codes, they are there, but I have designed the software so that you can create and build your own for your, for your own custom applications. And so when we go to the dashboard here, hopefully you've, you've seen this before, you know how this works and you've seen my walkthrough of how to create a new order. The process is very similar. We are going to, uh, we'll do one for the Bamboo Lab. So make sure that your file is a .gcode.3mf file, or if it's on a Prusa, make sure it's a G-code or BG-code file. Then you need to enter your quantity. Since we are working on ejection, we probably want a decent amount of units. So we're gonna just assume that we want 100 units of this vase here, and we are going to choose the right group. So for us, it's gonna be group two, that is where my bamboo printer is set up. You can see bamboo A1, it's in group two right now. So I wanna make sure that I'm assigning this to the correct group. And then I wanna click on enable ejection. It gives you a little bit of a warning here, just saying that this is not necessarily working properly. It is getting better. I, it was the big focus of this last improvement. And so I'm pretty confident. I can't say it's 100%, but it's working pretty well for me so far. Now in this box right here, you can enter whatever G code you want. That is the beauty of this system. So if you want uh, your extruder to move all the way to the left-hand side so that it pushes a button that turns on a fan so that it cools down your part, we can put that in here. If you want a G code that lowers the nozzle and pushes your part off the front of the bed, we can put that in here. If you want a G code that's gonna wipe the nozzle at the end of every print, we can put that in here. And the beauty of this system is that it is going to send this G code at the end of every print. The other thing that you need to know is that when it sends this G code at the end of a print, it is going to reset the printer to ready, meaning that that printer is then going to be able to accept the next job. And so no matter what you do here, you need to find a way that if you're going to run this program, you need to get that part off of the bed using this G code. And so what I would recommend is using something that I've created to basically start you off here or customize it uh, using ChatGPT or Grok or Gemini, any of these AI tools are really, really good at writing G code for you. You can just tell it what you want it to do and it will give you the code. And, uh, and you need to copy and paste it into this field here. Then once you have one that you like or, or one that you wanna test out, I would recommend saving it as your default. This is gonna save it to the software and hopefully it is going to pop up here the exact same way next time. This is the G code that I am running right now. It is called a uh, simple bed ejection sequence for the Bamboo A1. It will actually also work on the Prusa Mark IV and Mark IV S. So it works really well. And basically the idea here is that it is going to move the extruder to the middle of the X axis. It is going to move it down. So it is five millimeters off the plate. Then it is going to move the bed to the back of the printer so that the extruder pushes the print that is hopefully placed in the middle of the bed it moves it and pushes it off the front of it. I've got lots of videos of this on social media if you wanna check any of that out. But that is basically what we're trying to do here. 
And so when we are looking at G code, the most important thing you need to know is that if it has this semicolon in front of it, the G code is not gonna read anything on this line after the semicolon. And so if you go semicolon and then simple bed ejection sequence for bamboo A1, the simple bed ejection bamboo sequence A1 is just text. It is just instructions for somebody that is looking at the code. It is just for you to visually see uh, what is happening here and for you to understand what that line means. And so when we go G90 and then semicolon and absolute positioning, absolute positioning is just an explanation of what G90 means. And so as soon as that semicolon is here, it basically stops reading any of the code on that line. And so the only code that gets read on this line of G code here is G90. And then absolute positioning is just for humans looking at the code. Same thing as we go down. So G1, Y220, F6000. That's basically move the bed to Y220. So G1 is move. Y is the location it wants to move to. And F6000 is the speed. So that is how you read and how you write G code. Everything on the right side of the semicolon is basically human instructions. Everything on the left side is the G code that the computer is reading. And so you can use any of the AI tools out there to customize and create your own G code. You can write it yourself. You can just look up what the different G code commands are and you can customize this in any way you want. Right now, how I have it set up is that the extruder is going to move to Y220 and it's going to move to X128. So it's gonna to move to the middle position and it's gonna move the bed all the way to the front. And then here you can see I have semicolon G4 S60 semicolon wait 60 seconds. And so that first semicolon is gonna nullify everything else in here. And then G4 S60 basically means wait 60 seconds. And so if you wanted to um, wait two minutes, you would just change this to 120 and you would get rid of the semicolon and now your printer is gonna wait for two minutes before it moves on to the next command. I have this knocked out because I'm just printing a simple vase that can be ejected as soon as the printing is done. And so if you wanna add a delay in here, that's how you do it. You could also do it with temperature. And then I run basically three cycles where it moves the bed from the front of the printer to the back and the extruder kind of knocks that print off. And then M84 is going to disable the motors and that's it, that's going to basically be the end of the G code. And so what's gonna happen here is we are going to print one large vase with no purge line, and then we're gonna send this G code and we're gonna knock that part off of the printer and the G code's gonna reset the printer back to ready and then it's gonna send the next vase and it's gonna send number 99 and then it's gonna knock it off and then it's gonna send 98 and then it's gonna knock it off and then it's gonna send 97 and then it's gonna knock it off. And if you have multiple printers connected, all in the exact same group that can read this file, it's basically going to automate the entire system. And that is the beauty of PrintQ. That is why I'm so excited about this. And that is why this is a total game changer for 3D print farms. And so that is how ejection works. We've got this all set in here. We're gonna click on send order right now. You can see I've now got the order in here it is for group two. I'm gonna delete this order. And now as soon as this A1 finishes printing, the, the order that we sent in the last video, it is going to start this order and you can see that ejection is enabled. So it is going to send that G code after every single print. And I've got lots of videos of this on the website and on social media. So you can see ejecting uh, actually in action here, but the key and the advantage here is that you now have a tool where you can customize this G code to do whatever you want. And so eventually I want it to turn on a fan that cools down the parts and then pushes it off and, and turns off the fan and, triggers a light and sends an email and we can program all of that in, which is just so exciting. And so we can really start to automate the entire farm. And now you can also see that our Prusa printer has finished its first part and you can do the exact same process with both Prusa and with Bamboo. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave a comment, send us an email, send us a message. And uh, I can't wait to see what you come up with. And if you can share any of your custom G codes that you create, that would be absolutely fantastic. I sincerely appreciate it. We'll see you guys later.